Hmm. Mr. Larry, how you doing this evening? So, so far right now, YouTube is the only thing that is up and running. Uh, looks like Facebook and uh, Instagram are down. I know they've been having problems with their server all day. So we might only be broadcasting to uh, YouTube tonight. Paul, how you doing? Rich, good evening. Jay Colley. Yeah, uh, Facebook and Instagram is having problems with their server. It's not letting me connect to either so we may just be uh doing this the old-fashioned way and broadcasting to youtube only tonight but that is okay sadly it appears that facebook has currently gone down we expect Facebook to resolve this issue shortly. Hmm. But 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 Larry um bad Mike Strong, I'm working at the same time, but I'm happy to make it to another live WWQA. Lori, hello, Luke, how you doing? Luke, are you guys surviving the storm of the century over there in Colorado? Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think Facebook and Instagram are going to join us. It's it's kind of funny because usually, um, you know, YouTube is the one that's kind of lagging, but these two are. So uh, that elk video you put up was really good. I liked it. Jay, appreciate it. Yeah, what's funny about that is that was actually. Uh, the very first elk hunt that I actually uh, filmed. And back then it was with a camera that didn't even use the cassette tapes. It actually used a Hi8 cassette. So it was, it was pretty interesting. As you can tell, it's definitely not HD or any of that. But, you know, hey, it, uh, it was fun nonetheless. So, Scott, how you doing? Now's the time to give away something big. I like it. I like it. Facebook is broken, I guess. Luke, yeah, about two inches of snow with tons of rain and wind. Yeah, I know. It's uh, They're calling for hurricane force winds. So, um, Andy, yes, Facebook is broken. They've been having problems with their server all day. And Facebook actually also owns Instagram. So, um, yeah, we may not be uh, recording to those tonight. So... Matt, ready for more abstract one, dig in the hat. Where can I pick one up? This is from the group called Pack 'em Out. Um, it's Pack 'em Out Apparel on Instagram. I believe they have a Facebook page also, um, but you can definitely check them out. Pack 'em Out Apparel, and uh, yeah, they've got hats and shirts and all kinds of stuff. So, you know what? Forget it. We will just focus on you guys tonight. So, all right. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, hello, everybody. I'm Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy, and this is Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. If you are new to Wapiti Wednesday Q&A, first off, welcome. Uh, the way Q&A works is I typically start with a subject. Tonight we're going to talk about the moon phases, elk activity during those moon phases, and how to hunt each of those uh, moon phases. Um, but, like always, we're definitely here to answer your questions as well. So as we're rolling along, feel free to go ahead and put in the questions that you may have. It doesn't matter which platform you're from. Once everything kind of comes online, we'll capture all that and we will um, answer those questions to the best of our ability that we can without interfering with um, others. So now, one thing to also note real quick, both on Instagram and Facebook, I updated the web address. The new web address 
actually goes to what's called link tree and from there you can go to our patreon page you can go to our merchandise you can go to our latest video there's also social media links down below that will take you to facebook instagram youtube patreon and i know some of you jumped on there and you saw a link that says eca feature friday podcast so that is the big announcement that we have for you guys tonight. So, uh, guy, IG is down. Yeah, I know. Scott got a nice box in the mail from Bendable. Perfect. So, Scott Schmidt, I'm here until my plane takes off. Uh, Dennis, how is everyone doing? Brian, hi, everyone. So, okay. So, several of you saw that last week I posted a question and asked um, how you guys felt if we also offered, you know, kind of the Wapiti Wednesday Q&A in audio format on a podcast. Now, it's not replacing the videos. It's an addition to. So, because I know a lot of you have said that you spend a lot more time in your truck and having the ability to listen to a podcast would be a lot easier. Well, because I aim to please and you guys rock. Guy, the owner of Western Contours Podcast, and I have been talking over the last week. And we have decided to give you guys what you are asking for. So what Guy is going to do on his Western Contours Podcast is he is going to be doing a Elk Calling Academy feature Friday. So every Friday, he is going to grab them some audio from the Wapiti Wednesday Q&A, and he is going to put it as a podcast on his Western Contours podcast, starting this Friday. So, if you guys have not subscribed to the Western Contours podcast, I strongly encourage you to go subscribe. And you can, you can subscribe to that podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Podbean. If you click on either link in Instagram or on Facebook, if you click, click on that website, it will take you to that link tree. And then all you have to do is click right on the ECA Feature Friday podcast. That will take you right to the Western Contours podcast main page on Podbean. And you can go ahead and subscribe and follow there. That does drop you onto the main page. And while you're there, check out all the other podcasts that he has. Because he's done some really great podcasts late, since starting. And he and I are sitting down for two hours on Monday to do a Western Contours specific podcast with Elk Calling Academy. So... There you go. You guys wanted podcasts. I greatly appreciate Guy and his ability and willingness to work together on this. So please go subscribe to Western Contours podcast and check out the other ones that they have. So uh, let's see. Brian, hello. Charles Buchanan, hello. Luke, got my hat and decal in the mail yesterday. N nice. Again, thank you for becoming a herd bull on Patreon. Oh, and on Patreon, we are only seven patrons away from giving away that ready to grow bundle from Ready Nutrients. So, Chad, I'm a podcast junkie. Tony, how you doing? So, okay, so let's jump into it. Moon phases. So, typically, one of the things I do, and I know the question a couple of weeks ago was how to choose, you know, really the best week to hunt. And there's a few things that I typically um, will take a look at before I really um, kind of decide or choose that week. One of them is the autumn equinox. So autumn equinox for 2019 is Monday, September 23rd. The other thing I take a look at is moon phase 
And then the third thing that I actually um, jump into is the uh, kind of the upcoming forecast for the winter. I'll take a look at Farmer's Almanac or a couple of other sources. So since it's a little early right now to jump into that forecast, I mean, we're not even through the winter we're in right now. I decided tonight would actually just talk about the moon phases. So the website I use is calendar-12.com. Another easier way you can do is just in your Google search, type in moon phases, September, 2019, and it will give you several options. This is where I get to dribble down the front of my shirt because obviously I don't know how to how to drink. You know, with <laughs> with all the uh, um, Facebook and Instagram, it's only fitting that I should uh, dribble. So, um, do, 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 do. so let's see. We got a couple of other things. Um, I like the podcast idea. Jeremy, not on Facebook tonight. No, Jeremy, Facebook and Instagram are actually down. They're having problems with their server. It will not let me connect at all. So I will include the iTunes link on the Western Contours Instagram. So there you go. If you guys are iTunes user, you can go to Western Contours on Instagram. Um, like and follow their page too. So uh, this is my third year. No elk want to know if it is better in early September or late. So, um, yeah, we'll kind of talk about that. What month is best to get out and scout? Good. Okay. We got some questions rolling in. All right. Um, so let's kind of talk about moon phases real quick. So I'm going to switch over to a different screen. I wish you guys could see this. In fact, you know what? We're going to do something. Since it is just YouTube tonight, we're going to see how well this goes. I don't know how well this is going to go or how well you guys will be able to see this. So now once I switch, but the only problem is as soon as I switch, okay, can you guys see that? Okay. Let me know in the chat because as soon as I turn the camera around and switch on to this view, I can't see the screen anymore. Okay, so we'll just do this. Okay, so this is the moon phase for September 2019. So season here in Idaho opens on August 30th. So you can see the first few days, we have no moon at all, pretty dark night. And slowly in that first week, it starts increasing up. Usually when you have no moon activity and dark nights, you have less elk activity, meaning you have more elk activity during last light and first light. So because since it's so dark, they're really not running around a bunch. Um, so they are a lot more active during the day, during dark nights. Now they can definitely, um, okay, good. So they can definitely see better at night than we can, but still it's, it's a dark pitch black night. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of roll through these, kind of talk about the elk activity, and then I'll come back and talk about how to hunt each of these. So Okay, second week, you can see that, and, and, and what, the reason I like about this one is it has waxing crescent, um, and it kind of tells you what the name of each of these are. Now, there actually is one other, okay, hold on, guys. I'm going to turn the camera around. You're going to get stuck with my beautiful face again because there is one other thing that I need to pull up that you guys will want to know <coughs> da, 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 da. 
I apologize, guys. I was working so hard to get Facebook and Instagram come up, but I forgot to really pull this other screen up. Okay, we're good. So now I can turn you guys back around. I know you guys enjoy seeing me, but you really are preferring more to see this part. It would be so nice if I could figure out how to just do screen capture so you guys could see this. Okay, so as we talked about, this first week, it's a dark moon. It slowly starts getting bigger. Now, if you notice in the second week, it goes from waxing gibbets, gibbons all the way to a full moon. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing because you could have weather. You could certainly have things that could block this moon. But here's one other thing that I check out. This is timeanddate.com. This gives you the moonrise, moonset, and phase calendar for sunrise. So right now we're specifically looking at the 8th through the 14th. So 8th through the 14th. So the moon is going to set at 2.09 a.m., but it's going to rise at 4.13 in the afternoon. So even though that moon is getting larger, there is a good portion of the night that is still dark. So, so if we go towards the end of the week here, the 14th, where the full moon is, again, not necessarily a bad thing because like I said, you could have weather, you could have storms. It could, you know, there's a lot of factors that could block that, but let's just see on the 14th. Okay, moon rise is 8.05 p.m and it's going to set at 8.13 a.m. the next morning. So that is going to be a bright night. So that means there is going to be a lot of elk activity on the 14th at night, which means because they have all that activity at night, they're gonna go to bed sooner and they're gonna come out later at the end of the day. In fact, they might not even come out until the last sliver of light. So, and so let's kind of go kind of from the 11th through the 17th, 18th or so, it's a pretty large moon. I mean, you're well over. We could even go the 10th through the 18th. So as you can see with the with the moon size, you know, 89% of the moon is visible, 94% of the moon is visible, 98%, and then on back down to 84. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over here to moonrise and moon set, and we're going to go from the 10th through the 18th. So the 10th, the moon is going to rise at 543, and it's going to set at 447 a.m. the next morning. That's a pretty good chunk of night where that moon's gonna be up. So same thing on the 11th, 623, 539, 659 on the 12th, set at 631 in the morning on the 13th. So yeah, all the way through that time frame there when that moon is 80% is or larger, that moon is going to be up for a good chunk of the night, which means you're gonna have bright nights. So if you don't have storms or cloud cover, it's gonna be a very bright night, which is going to be a lot of elk activity. Now, remember, we already determined that the autumn equinox this year is Monday the 23rd. And if you remember from talking in the past, the autumn equinox is what really triggers the rut. That is the equal amount of daylight and darkness at night. So it's the way that light, you know, hits the cow's eye that triggers the rut. Most cows are bred within a seven to 10 day window of that autumn equinox. Now the autumn equinox could be the start of those seven to 10 days. It could be the middle of the seven to 10 days, or it could be the end of the middle or, or, or the end of those seven to 10 days. 
Now, hypothetically, and I don't know what the weather forecast is going to be, because depending on how harsh the winter is going to be, that a lot of times will determine whether it's going to be a normal rut year or a late rut year. Um, in fact, I saw one question. Let's see if I can just find it real quick. Um, to, 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 do you think last year was just a fluke year then? Everything seemed to be off. Yes, because of the winter that we had, because the gestational period of the cows, they can, they can tell how the upcoming winter is going to be. The reason the rut was so late is because if you look at what's been happening here in February with all the snows, we're getting a lot of late snows, which means it's going to be a later melt off, which means later for those grasses. So those cows are going to be wanting to drop their calves later. Now, like I said, I haven't looked at the, at the forecast for winter 2019, 2020, but look at what the moon phase is doing around the autumn equinox. It's disappearing to where you have no moon at all. This right here excites me because one, we already know the 23rd is the, is, is the autumn equinox. Dang, if most cows are bred within a 7 to 10 day window of the, Edom, uh, of the autumn equinox, man, this thing right here is telling me that this dark, dark night is meaning there's not going to be much nighttime activity, but some really good daytime activity, meaning morning and evening time frame. They're going to go to bed later. So this is kind of elk activity. The darker the night the more time they are out during the daytime hours. The brighter the night, the less they are out during daytime hours. So on your dark nights, you have more opportunity or more chance of those morning hunts lasting a little bit longer and later into the morning and those evening hunts starting sooner. Now, the thing with bright nights is elk tend to go to bed sooner, but because of that, there's going to be midday activity. So, okay, here is what we were going to do. You guys have all seen that screen for a little bit. So, okay, so a bright night or a, or, or, or a full moon night is not necessarily... A bad thing yes you don't have that much activity in the morning you may not have any elk activity until the very last sliver of light but what you do have is some really good midday opportunities because remember we've talked about it in the past that when elk go to bed down they're basically laying down and they're working on the contents of their stomach well it only takes three and a half four hours for them to work on the contents well, if they're going to bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning because, you know, they were up all night because of the bright moon, well, 7.30, three and a half to four hours, now you're in that 11, 11.30 mark. You're in that midday time that a lot of people go back to camp. If you're willing to stay out there on the mountainside, you have some really, really good opportunity for midday run-ins, so... All right, two, uh, two, two, two. This is my third year no elk. Want to know if it is better in early September or late? So, Dennis, it 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 really depends. Um, I mean, I've had great luck first part of the season. I mean, two thousand. You know, last year I shot my bull on September second. Other years, it's it's been later in the season. Um, I know it's tough sometimes to just pick one week and especially for a lot of people that come from back east, that's all they have. They, they can only pick a seven to 10 day window. Really the best thing that you can do to gather that information is take a look at that autumn equinox the 23rd this year, take a look at the moon phase calendar and take a look at the winter forecast. Uh, if the winter forecast is showing a normal year, 
then you want to stage kind of your time. If, if I was to go out on a limb and say right now, if it was looking like it was going to be a normal winter year, I would say that week of the 23rd would be a really good week to choose to hunt elk for 2019. So, all right. Now, hunting approach to these different phases. So, again, just like when I talked about during hunting different phases of the rut, I don't really change my approach with how I hunt during the different moon phases because I, I leave camp in the dark. I come back in the dark. I spend as much time on the mountain as I can. The one thing that does change a little bit is what time during the day that I start my cow sounds. You know, I start my cow routine during that midday time frame. On a full moon night, I'm going to basically start those cow sound routines about 11 o'clock. Where on a dark night, I may push that until 1230, 1 o'clock. Because I know that those elk have gone to bed later. That's really the only thing that I really adjust during the different moon phases. As, as far as my approach in the morning and locating and trying to strike a bull, the only thing that I might change differently is on a full moon night, I'm going to start going in sooner because it is brighter and I have that advantage that I can see a little bit. So that way I'm closer to them. Now, the other thing about bright nights too is those are great opportunities for night bugling. And usually on a full moon or a bright moon night, those are the times that I'm going to get up earlier in the morning and I'm going to do my night bugling in the morning. Whereas on the dark nights, those are the times that I'm typically going to do my night bugling after dinner. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Uh, what month is best to get out and scout for potential spots? Should I be high in elevation on the mountain during this time also? Well, what month? That's kind of a hard question because it depends on what the winter's like, what the melt-off is like, how soon can those elk work back up the mountain? Because as that snow is melting, those plush grasses are starting to grow they're going to follow that snow line up the hill and the growth of those new grasses. Now the cows and calves, they're already going to stay down on lower elevations, but it's your bulls that are going to work up the mountain to the higher elevations to get above the tree line, to get into, um, or I guess out of the bugs and get into those solitude locations. So should you be high in elevation? I mean, it really depends on what you want. I will. I typically set cameras at different elevations um, because one thing that I really want to know is where are the cows and calves at? Because if you know where the cows and calves at, that's where the bulls are going to be early in the season because those bulls are going to leave the higher elevations, come down, round up the cows, and start heading for their, their breeding areas, their breeding zones. So, um, so definitely set your camera at different elevations. So downstream, we already talked about the fluke. Mike already is subscribed to Western Contour podcast. Really enjoyed the recent episode with Ryan Lavelle. Uh, maybe you should dribble because you drink. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've been having problems with that tonight. So, uh, hello from Southwest Washington. Our season this year will be near full moon. So, and that's the other thing is, you know, when the season opens, because I know some states actually open earlier in August, um, but you still have the opportunity to hunt some of those dark nights. So we can see it. Yes, 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 that works. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're showing us that moon. <laughs> you guys are funny. Uh, Brian, just logging on from Florida, just got back from some spot and stock hogs. Nice. Can't see with the angle, phone dying, check you later. Can you tilt the screen down? Ah, 
Okay, so if they're betting earlier because of the full moon, would they tend to be a bit more active mid-morning, midday? Yes. So um, we need a wise cow to be a weather girl. No kidding. So Matt, season's over on the 22nd in Oregon. But you still get running activity. So, and, and, and that's that's the thing. I mean, remember that 23rd is just kind of, typically what triggers the rut remember that window can be before the the 20 the autumn equinox or so there's that window of most cows being bred sh, you know shifts quite a bit and in fact this this year or, or last year 2018 i didn't even see the peak rut until third week of october it was extremely late so i hope it's 10 days before Midday is my lucky hunt to time. Midday is a great time to hunt. So, uh, episode to record. Yes, guy, this would be a good one to kind of throw on. So, my season is the 8th through the 20th. Okay, so Dennis, the 8th through the 20th. Yeah, you're going to you're going to be dealing with that full moon and remember we looked at moonrise and moonset, so you're going to have some pretty pretty good nights, bright nights. So really, Dennis, my advice that I can give to you with your hunt being the 8th through the 20th is in the morning, start, you know, leave camp sooner. Um, get going because you will have that bright night. So you will be able to see a little easier. Get farther up on that mountain. Get closer to, you know, where they're feeding. That way, as soon as it does get light enough, since they're probably going to go to bed a lot sooner, they're really going to start traveling um, as soon as the light comes, as soon as the you know daylight starts cracking, if not a little bit before that. Um, so you just want to get up a little earlier, get higher up on the mountain when that daylight does crack. So that way you're in position that you can take advantage of that little bit of activity in that little sliver early, early in the morning. Um, but then you're going to kind of want to stay up on that elevation. You're, you're going to want to... <laughs> You're going to want to move a little higher up on the mountain um, so that thermals are blowing up, but you're close enough to those bedding areas that then around that 11 o'clock time frame, you just start with the cow sounds, the two or three soft cow, cow mews, cow sounds, wait four or five minutes, do two or three more sounds, wait four or five minutes, do two or three more sounds, and do that. You're going to find that during that midday a couple of things are going to happen. One is you're going to get the herd bull that's going to get up to go get some water, go feed, go check his cows. He's going to crack off and acknowledge that he heard you. At that point, you have his location. Then you can slip in, get set up, and start engaging and working that bull. Or the other thing that is going to happen is you are going to get those silent tricksters that is going to come in without saying a sound. And so that's why anytime you start those cow sounds, you need to have an arrow knocked and you need to be very, very aware of your surroundings. So Matt, night scouting. Night bugling is something that I do a ton and it's either after dinner or it's early, early in the morning. So uh, Mad Viking, thanks Mike. Answer helped a lot. You bet, Scott, you mooned us. This is a family-friendly po podcast. I know, and that's why I thought about, you know, really not turning the camera because I didn't want to moon you all. Scott, you're killing me. Don't you have a plane to get on? Oh, wait. Nope, sorry. That's different Scott. Scott Schmidt is getting on the airplane. Zach, do you think part of the late rut could be due to the amount of hunting pressure? Elk hearing push so much that majority of cows aren't getting bred in October. No, the elk rut is going to happen when it happens. It doesn't matter if there's one person in the woods or if there's a thousand people in the woods. They will find their little holes to get away from the pressure to do their breeding. It has nothing to do with hunting pressure and everything to do with the gestational period and the growth of that cow or that calf and when that calf is being born. It doesn't matter on temperature. It doesn't matter on hunting pressure. None of that. Now, the hunting pressure may affect how vocal they are or how easy it is to find them. 
But as far as the actual breeding, no, it has absolutely no effect on on when they breed. So, uh, Luke, it was the second week of October before the elk even got fired up here. Yep, cow calling midday equals dead bull. Yes, Charles is one that can speak firsthand of that. He actually applied this principle um, on his hunt in November, December. So, anyways, so. Okay, um, for those of you living in Utah, I am leaving Friday morning and I will be down at the International Sportsman's Expo in Sandy, Utah at the um, Southtown Expo. I will be probably in town about midday on Friday. Uh, I will be hanging out at the show pretty much the remainder of the day Friday. You, I'll either be in the Scree booth or the Backcountry e-bikes booth. Saturday morning, I have the regional qualifier for the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation World Elk Calling Champion, excuse me, Championships. I will be broadcasting that live on the YouTube channel for those of you that want to tune in and watch that Saturday morning. I think our callers meeting is at 1030 and I think the contest starts at 11 o'clock mountain time. So, so that's happening this weekend. Uh, I also did another review video of the Elk Addicts Rip It 450 and Elk Addicts uh, Deuce. So I was going to put that up Friday, but I think instead I'm going to do a broadcast, live broadcast Friday from the show down there. Don't know what I'm going to broadcast about. Don't know who I'm going to broadcast with, but Friday there will be a live broadcast. So... All right, um, what other questions do you guys have about moon phase activity or hunting strategies uh, for those moon phases? So the only reason I didn't talk more about the moon rise and moon set really beyond that 18th time frame is um, Pretty much because once that moon really gets it to that 80% on the 10th, it's going to be pretty much up all night. So it's going to be pretty much a bright night from the 10th through the 18th, 19th time frame. And then it will really start darkening up again. So the only thing we could hope for at this time is cloud cover to make those dark nights. So... Uh, to do to do to two, to, to, you got it, boss. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, they must have known about all the snow this year. You know, you know, Matt. Here's what's funny. Okay, so, okay, 2018. In fact, I I did a video on it last year where I went through the moon phase calendar, I went through the autumn equinox, and I went through the farmer's almanac. Farmer's almanac. Now, granted, I mean, it's not written in stone. Things can change. But Farmer's Almanac was telling me that um, it was going to be a normal winter year. But I knew something was odd when I killed my bull on September 2nd and he had that much fat on him. Normally, when you see that much fat build up on an animal, that's a good indication that there's a harsh winter coming. They know they stock up on that fat. So um, that's why I thought it was really, really weird with the fat that I saw on him and everything that I was seeing on winter forecasts. Um, it just wasn't really making any sense. But then the way the activity was going, I could tell from that point that, man, okay, we're going to have a late rut. And what really dawned on me was, you know, September 13th, 14th, and we're still getting into bulls that are still in bachelor groups. They haven't even broken up from bachelor groups. Okay, that tells me that they were about two, two and a half weeks behind how they normally are because normally end of August, mid to end of August is when they're breaking up from the, those bachelor groups and establishing their pecking orders and rounding up the cows. Well, here we are September 13th, 14th, and we're still seeing these bachelor groups. That's immediately when I knew, okay, we're in a late rut year. So those are things that while you're out there, we can do all this prep. We can look at all this data and, you know, we can look at these sites and, and guess 
And that's really what we're doing is we're guessing when we think that rut is going to happen. But as soon as you get out there, pay attention to the activity that you're seeing. Pay attention to the information that the animals in the mountains are giving you. So uh, if, you're, if you're seeing, um, so some of you guys in Oregon that start early August, if you're seeing those bulls broken up early, and split apart from their bachelor groups and they already have cows together, you know, that could be a good indication that it's going to be an early rut. But if everything kind of goes as normal, so here you are, end of August, they're breaking up, they're starting to round up cows. Now you know, okay, we're going to have a normal rut year and that's where that autumn equinox really comes into play even more. So, uh, Danny, yes, Facebook and Instagram servers are down. That's why nothing's on there. Josh or fires. Yeah, fires are not necessarily a bad thing. It just all depends on how big the fire is, how hot it burns. But yes, fires can also produce a lot of smoke into the air that also act as a cloud cover to shield that bright moon and also. So... Abstract one, would you start with cow calling to locate or would you use a location bugle? I always do a couple of cow calls first. And reason is, is one, it gets the reed set in the roof of my mouth. It gets a little saliva on it. But also if there's a bull that's within 100 yards, I don't want to go from silent to crack a loud big location bugle. So, and we've had it before where we've thrown those, those couple of cow sounds out how to bull respond within that 100 yard window and then we're scrambling to set up right there and start working that bull so i always cow call you know a couple of times before i uh before i locate so uh radar it was a crazy year for sure yes it was it was a really really odd year need a kathy the cow like groundhog that would be awesome you know, if we had a cow or something that could let us know really what's going to be happening, you know, coming up, it would make things a whole lot easier. So, Matt Jones, what are the best temperatures to look for? I like cool mornings and fairly warm days. And what I mean by cool mornings is, you know, if you could have a morning that is upper 30s, and then your midday highs are getting upper 50s, that to me is a perfect day for elk hunting. So because it's cool enough and it's not a, a huge drastic jump in the temperature that you're going to have more time with thermals blowing down in the morning. So you have a little more consistency, you know, on those thermals blowing down and your ability because your memory mornings you're usually starting low and working up so that kind of gives you a little bit more time you're not so pressed to you know cover a bunch of ground um, but that is just kind of what I like plus I like cooler days anyways and I know first part of the season it's rough uh, you know pretty dang warm especially for states like Oregon that start middle of August and you guys got a lot of a lot of heat to deal with um, but it can still be really really effective time out there I mean any time spent out in the elk woods it's a great day it's a great time to be out there so off topic what winter kill info hard stress can we get from the game wardens in our hunting area at this time it's still pretty early for them to really know how winter kill is you can call them and kind of talk I, I i know here in boise i i really watch the foothills right outside of boise the boise front uh, because we have the advantage that we get to see that snow line creep down the mountain to boise and then it goes back up the hill then it creeps back down then it goes back up that is always telling me okay they have good access to feed but it also depends on where their winter ground is you know do they have areas where the snow does leave do they have areas and access to good food um because i know oh, i saw somebody post a picture the other day of a bull that was kind of he was kind of trapped on a soft finger ridge 
in the snow, in the ice. He just, he was so exhausted that he could hardly even pick his head up. Whether he was going to make it or not, I, I don't know. Um, but yes, you can call game wardens and kind of, kind of get information of how the, how the herd is doing. The other thing that you can find out, I know a couple of years ago when we had a really, really bad winter here in Idaho, that fish and game actually created a couple of, uh, uh, feeding sites that was asking for volunteers to um, truck up alfalfa pellets to help the elk and the deer. So definitely, you know, get a hold of the game wardens, find out how they're stressing, how they're doing. And if it's really bad in your area, ask if there is any feed sites and if they need volunteers to help. And that's a great way to give back for you guys. Uh, that is Utah's problem. Archery season starts too early, ends too early. And I know some of the states do that because they focus or they want to give opportunity to some of the rifle hunters in that early September, mid-September time frame. Um, but again, like I said, even though it is early, there is still generally rut activity going on with them breaking up from the herds picking up their cows. In fact, some of you guys, um, you know, with those earlier start times, you know, your cow vocalizations can be extremely effective because that's what those bulls at that time are looking for. So, you know, they've, they've broken up, they've established their pecking order, they've established their dominance, and now they're going to go round up the girls. So could be a really, really good time to focus on cow sounds. So, all right, guys, we are nearing the end. So last round of questions. If you have any questions for moon phase or uh, maybe some different hunting strategies for those different moon phases, um, throw them out. Let's, uh, let's get those covered. So um, I still have some of the questions from past episodes that didn't get covered so we're definitely going to roll into um some of those questions jason phelps and i are still talking about getting together and expanding on the short brief conversation that we had down at the hunt expo i would really like to try to figure out how to do that as a live stream and maybe have that as a whoppity wednesday where jason and i both are online talking about and expanding on some of those but also you know then there's there's the both of us that can you know fire questions at so i don't know logistically if we can make it happen but i'll see what i can do so uh downstream good topics tonight thanks you are very welcome so paul are you just kidding me we're just getting warmed up i know but we're we're already uh you know 49 50 minutes into it so you know, usually try to keep it at that hour mark. I mean, time flies when you're when you're having fun. Uh, you know, funny funny story. While I'm waiting for a couple of questions, um, Friday I gathered all of my hunting partners and all of our wives, and we got together um, for beer and wings at Buffalo Wild Wings, just because some of the wives hadn't met each other. And it was funny because the wives were sitting there talking, and I heard my wife make the comment that she said, uh, "She goes, you know, I hear elk." all year long in my house, whether it's lessons or Q and A's or getting ready for contest or getting ready for season. And one of the wives made the comment, Oh, I know my husband will bugle. But then every Wednesday night I hear Michael's voice come through the computer. And then one of the other wives go, Oh, I know I hear Michael's voice every Wednesday. And so my wife chimes up and goes, well, if they have Wapiti Wednesday, maybe we could start Wine Wednesday, which is a support group for wives while their husbands watch Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. So if you guys are in the Boise area, my wife is starting a support group for the wives for Wapiti Wednesday Q&A so that they don't have to sit there and listen to my voice coming across their computer, I guess. So anyways, um, Mike Strong, maybe one of these Wapiti Wednesdays should be a Q&A catch-up episode where you just go through the list of old questions. Yeah, and, and some of these, uh, you know, some of these, Mike, there's a lot of questions that basically uh, are, are, are repeated. Um, some of them are actually questions of things that I actually teach in the private lessons or on the Patreon page. 
So, um, but yeah, I could certainly, you know, go through those. Um, but also I kind of like, the interaction and, and firing the live questions with you. Look at that, Kelly Ford. I just talked about uh, the support group, and Kelly chimes in. Yeah, they they were funny. That was a good time. So, all right, guys. So Friday, Western Contours podcast, Elk Calling Academy feature Friday starts. Um, definitely make sure you subscribe. Um, on my Instagram page and Facebook page, you can click on the website link that will take you over to where you can click on another link and get right to that podcast on Podbean. Guy is going to put the link up for uh, the iTunes on his Instagram page. So make sure you go over to Instagram. Make sure that you uh, follow Western Contours and get ready for the podcast because they're, they're going to start rolling this Friday and they're going to roll every Friday. So... All right, Jeremy, great insight tonight. Been back and worth when to take vacation this season. Perfect. Hope that helped. Got here late with this reply, missed moon phase stuff. So Danny, sorry, man, uh, probably going to have to watch the replay or you know what? I will see you Saturday and we can kind of talk about it in person. How about that? I would love to sit down and talk with you in person. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in tonight. As always, I really appreciate the support. As always, keep calling, keep practicing. Most importantly, though, have fun while you're doing it. And we will see you guys next week on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Q&A brought to you by Elk Calling Academy. Have a great week, everybody.